Well, welcome everybody. This um, meeting tonight is a meeting of the Mayor's Neighborhood Leadership Cabinet, and we've set up this presentation on the, uh, the Census for 2020 as a program that we also invited many other people to. So we're going to begin with uh, the first part of their meeting, get into the program, and then uh, if you want to leave after that, that's fine, and then just the members of the Mayor's Neighborhood Leadership Cabinet will continue their meeting after that. So first of all, um, I, everybody signed in, so we're all set with that. Uh, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And then uh, the... The cabinet needs to approve their minutes from their July 16th meeting. I'd entertain a motion. Second. Very good. Any uh, conditions or corrections to the minutes? Okay, seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Thank you. Those minutes will stand. Well, our feature presentation today is on the 2020 Complete uh, Count Committee. So we're in the process of setting this committee up. And tonight we have Tasha Jenkins here. She's a partnership specialist for the Census Bureau, and she's out of the Chicago office. So I'm going to turn it over to Tasha for her presentation. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for allowing me some time to talk with you this evening. Um, as the mayor said, I'm a partnership specialist with the U.S. Census Bureau. Uh, Wisconsin is part of the Chicago region. Um, I actually don't live in Chicago. I live in Milwaukee, so my travel was not that far today. Um, <clears throat> this is a, I want to talk about the Complete Count Committee, specifically a partnership with Sheboygan and the Census Bureau as we prepare for the 2020 Census. Uh, I'll start with a video here on, where, if you click on that, Chad, I think that video will play, yeah. I hear some it's I hear some sound. Distributed to communities like yours each year. And in 2020, like yours each year. And in 20 can one girl in a small town, an architect in a major city, and a suburban high school coach shape the future of the United States? Future of the United States? Yes, they can. Because every 10 years, the census gives us that power. You can shape your future by responding to the 2020 census. Where do we need new roads to make our lives easier? Where will new school programs help our children thrive? 
Where could a new health clinic benefit neighborhoods? The 2020 census will inform these decisions and shape how billions of dollars will be distributed to communities like yours each year. And in 2020, you can respond to the census online, by phone, or by mail. It's easy, safe, and important. Make sure you and everyone you know is counted. Now is the time for you to get involved. Your community needs you. Together, we can educate and excite, inspire and make sure every voice is heard. Together, we can shape our future. Can go past there. You can go past that one. Um, Marilyn Sanders is the um, Chicago Sanders Regional Census Center, Center Director. Regional Census Center Director. Regional Census Center Director. <laughs> and uh, I would be remiss if I didn't start my comments with you by relaying her thanks for the opportunity to talk about partnership. Um, this is just an overview of some of the things I'll cover tonight with you. Uh, I will be respectful of your time and be sure to not uh, talk too long. In your folders, there's a series of information that's helpful as you have discussions about reaching uh, populations that may be hard to count in Sheboygan populations that may be hesitant to respond to the census. Some of that information includes media materials. We do have uh, the media materials available electronically, and I've shared that with Chad. Chad is the census liaison for Sheboygan, so my communication is with him. He's the, the point of contact for anything that you need from the Census Bureau um, as you have those discussions. Also in the folder, there's on the left side a guide that talks about the Complete Count Committee and what some of the role of the Complete Count Committee. And just to summarize it for you, the Complete Count Committee is really um, trusted voices in Sheboygan that could help talk about the importance of responding to the census um, when that information comes out in March of next year. Um, that information is better heard from you guys than from the Census Bureau. Again, this is Marilyn Sanders. She's the Regional Center Director out of Chicago. Our goal for the Census is to count everyone once, only once and in the right place. And she knows from her experience with working with the decennial censuses, and this is her fourth one, so she's been around for a long time. Um, we can't do this work without partnering with you guys. In our region, we have eight states, Arkansas, Illinois, Iowa, Indiana, Missouri, Michigan, Minnesota, and fabulous Wisconsin. And so we have a lot of work we're doing currently to engage and develop partnerships throughout our region. There's six regions um, across the country, and there's a number of partnership specialists doing the same kinds of work that I'm doing. In Wisconsin alone, we have about 24 partnership specialists here. Um, spread out throughout the communities. Some are focused on community-based base organizations. Some are focused on governmental municipalities. We also have a couple of uh, media specialists that are working here as well. In this state alone, we have four area census offices that are open. Milwaukee, Green Bay, you're kind of in the middle of those two. Uh, Madison and Eau Claire. So the field work in terms of hiring staff that will go out in the field, most of that work is happening in those area census offices with a connect to our Chicago Regional Census Center. 
Well, that's a lovely picture. I don't know if you guys want to take a picture. You certainly have the ability to take a picture if you want to at some point tonight. Um, there are release forms in your, your packet if you do want to take a picture and want that shared on the Census website. We do have on the Census Bureau website all the, the municipalities and everywhere that complete count committees have formed, and we certainly want to make sure that Sheboygan is on that map. The purpose of tonight is really to provide an overview for you about the 2020 census and what it means to partner with us in terms of establishing that complete count committee. Why do we do the census? We do the decennial census every 10 years um, based on a constitutional mandate. Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution mandates that we count everyone residing in the United States every 10 years. There are a number of important uses of the census data. The two big uses of the data that I'll speak to tonight. Um, the apportionment of the House of Representatives happens every 10 years based on census data. Um, so it's important that we have an accurate count for Wisconsin um, so that uh, our seats are represented in the House of Representatives. Also, federal funding, $675 billion annually is allocated based on census data. So um, for communities that don't have a complete count, they can lose resources, and they can lose those resources for 10 years. Um, as we use the data from the census, um, it helps with a number of planning things that happen at the federal level, at the state level, and at the local level. As an example, um, children under five is one of the populations that we count. Um, the data from the census impacts planning around schools, impacts planning for daycares and other things locally. It impacts funding for schools, funding for uh, SNAP and other uh, federal programs. As households receive information about responding to the 2020 census, that information will start to come out and start to reach households in March. Um, the, the first initial phase will happen March 12th through March 20th. People will be uh, asked to respond to the questionnaire. And for 2020, people can still respond with a paper questionnaire they can respond over the phone, and new for 2020, they can respond online. Um, online is the new addition to um, ways to respond, and we're hoping with those three ways to respond that our response rate will increase from what we've had in the past censuses. These languages that you see on the screen are the languages that are available for people as they respond online and on the phone. We know as we put the message out about the importance of responding to the census that the confidentiality of the data that we collect uh, is an issue and is a question. And I can tell you, um, number one, the folks that work at the Census Bureau take a lifetime oath to not share data, um, to keep anything that we have access to confidential. And again, it's a lifetime oath. Um, there are a number of penalties um, at the federal level um, for people that breach that confidentiality. Um, as a bureau, we have a priority of working with federal partners to ensure that the data we collect is secure, and we have not had any data issues at the Census Bureau. We also cannot share that data. That includes sharing it with other uh, federal departments. The, this male participation rate is one of the resource tools that the Census Bureau has on our website. This can give you a, a sense of what have, uh, has been our response rate for the last census, which was 2010, and also the 2000 um, census. From this map, you can look from a statewide level. The statewide level is what you see on the screen, but you can zero down all the way down to a census tract level. Um, in our region, uh, Wisconsin had the number one response rate in 2010, 
that is also the number one response rate in the country. So as a state, we want to maintain that level of number one. We'd like to be number one for a lot of things, and this is one of them. Um, our operational timeline, we have done a lot of things up to date to verify the addresses that we have in our database. We started with some work with municipalities. One of the things that we sent out was a local update to census addresses, the acronym is LUCA. That um, information asks municipalities about new construction that's happening in their communities, new construction that will be occupied by April 1st, 2020. April 1st, 2020 is the important date because that's census day. When people are responding to the 2020 census, they're responding based on what's happening in their household as of April 1st, 2020. So we wanted to make sure we captured anything that would, any new construction that was happening that would have folks um, occupied in those um, addresses as of that date. So they're in our uh, database. We also had a number of people out in the field verifying the addresses that we have in our database. And you may have seen some folks from the census in your community. Um, the mayor's office may have gotten calls. Hey, there's someone from the Census Bureau in, on my block. We did have people out from August through October um, doing that uh, field work. As we move to the beginning of the year, we will send people out again to connect with places called group quarters. Group quarters are facilities that have a number of non-related um, people that reside. Um, those are places like uh, shelters, nursing homes, dorms. We start our work with those uh, facilities um, a lot earlier in the year because it takes us a little time to get that um, wrapped up. Then in March, we will start to send out um, to households um, the 2020 census questionnaire um, invitation to respond to the census. That will happen starting in March. Um, we're asking people to respond. You don't have to wait till April 1st. You can respond um, before that. In the summer, we will send people out again to start to knock on uh, doors and addresses that haven't responded to the census yet. Then we wrap up our work um, at in the end of the summer. And then by the end of 2020, we deliver to the Office of the President the aggregated data that we collect. And then we deliver to the states April 1st of 2021, that data. That's when states will find out if they've maintained, lost, or gained any house seats. That's when the work of redistricting in the state levels start to happen. So that's a quick overview of everything that's on that operational timeline. I talked a little bit about group quarters, and again, that work will start at the beginning of the year, and we will um, take that work really th the first quarter of 2020, that work will happen. In addition to um, the group quarters, we also know that we need to do some work to capture people that are homeless, for example. So we have a series of things that we will um, do to connect with anyone. Again, it's counting everyone in the right place, and we want to make sure we're capturing everyone regardless of where they're at. This service-based enumeration is uh, another um, way that we're connecting to ensure that we connect with people where, regardless of where they're at. And then enumeration of trans transitory locations, that really focuses on folks that are homeless that may you know, be at a soup kitchen. Um, our, our work to capture and count homeless folks really happens the night before April 1st, 2020. We definitely connect with communities to know where we need to be at and work with um, the municipalities and communities to make sure that we're doing that um, that evening of April 1st, 2020. Again, another term for another uh, focus effort on the targeted non-shelter outdoor. Again, we will find where people are and connect so that we're counting everyone in the right place. Complete count committees. Those are volunteer committees established by communities. We have not um, dictated to anyone what a complete count committee looks like, how many people should be on it, um, what sectors of the community they represent. The goal for complete count committees are really to have trusted voices from, your, from Sheboygan that can really talk about 
who might be those populations that are hard to count, and what kinds of strategies can we be engaged in to communicate with them so that they can respond when they have the census information in their hands. Um, the, the structure for complete count committees, again, can vary. I've seen complete count committees that have been a size of 40. I've seen complete count committees that have been one. The structure depends on what works best for Sheboygan. And I'm sure you guys, along with the mayor, will talk about what that looks like for Sheboygan. Uh, the complete count committees have t are typically appointed by the highest elected official, and that would be mayor, the mayor. Um, the liaison for Sheboygan is Chad, and he has been very helpful. These are some of the sectors in your community that have been represented on various complete count committees that have been established. Um, someone for the library, the health department, uh, the media, all ways and sectors that can participate and certainly have discussions about who we need to reach out to. These are samples of how um, complete count committees have been organized. And again, our job at the Census Bureau is really to provide resources for you as, as you have discussions about how you want to move forward um, it, to prepare for responding to the 2020 Census. No size is um, the wrong size. Um, the size that you determine is the appropriate size for Sheboygan. This is a different view of that timeline that I kind of reviewed with you a few moments ago. Here are some examples of who might be hard to count populations. Um, children under five is a hard to count population. Interesting enough, in the 2010 census, um, we did uh, from the self response period children under five was the highest undercounted population. And some of what we learned from that is that some more complicated households contributed to that number. For example, if a mom and a dad aren't in the same household and one thought the other counted the child and the child got missed, those were some of the examples of what happened. Um, the homeless seniors, for Wisconsin, we have a lot of snowbirds. Those, those are some examples of who might be hard to count populations for Sheboygan. The Response Out Outreach Area Mapper, better known as Rome, is another tool on the census website. This does some predictions um, of who, what the percentage of non-response might be for your community for 2020. There's a number of uh, data feeds that help um, determine what that prediction is for Rome. Um, on this map, the lighter the area, the better, uh, the better it is in that community. Um, but you can also, for this, look at a state level and drill down to a local uh, a census tract level. Um, the nice thing that you will find on Rome there is a lot of data about your community. There's demographic breakdown of the population in Sheboygan, even by census tract. There's a breakdown of the number of folks that, are, that have health insurance, for example, the number of households that have computers. So a lot of data is on this Rome that, again, can help, help you have those conversations about what, where, where should we target our messaging about the importance of responding to the census? In some of the um, meetings that we've had, um, we've had groups that wanted to take some time to have some dialogue about who might be some of the hard to count populations in their communities, and I don't know if you wanna do that now, one of the questions I do want to ask, has anyone participated on a complete count committee in the past? Has anyone worked with the, oh, chat, see, that's why he's a liaison. <laughs> has
Has anyone participated with the Census Bureau in terms of helping to get some of the field work done in, in 2010? There, there's a hand over here. <laughs> uh, you can go pay. Again, for the discussion for Sheboygan is who are those hard to count populations? What are some resources and some ways you can get messages out to those populations? Organizations, um, people, however that needs to happen for you guys. Next steps are determined by you guys. Um, I know this meeting will go on. There's some things on the agenda that you need to talk about. But in terms of some discussions about the 2020 census and getting that message out um, before March, uh, when those things start to hit people's household, is really the focus and the next steps for Sheboygan. In addition to promoting and getting uh, the message out about the importance of responding to the 2020 census, we also have a great deal of uh, hiring that we have to do um, to get the field work that's necessary done. We want to hire people in those communities where the field work happens. So we're asking for partnership to also get the word out about responding and uh, applying for jobs that are available. The process um, is a simple process. We don't require a resume. What we require is that um, you have to be close to 18 to apply. You don't have to be 18 when you apply. You do have to be 18 when you start the position. You need a social security number and you need an email address to start the process. During the process, you will be asked a number of situational questions that really just try to get a sense of what your work life uh, experience is and then you will get a follow-up call from a recruiter asking more questions about what you're looking for are you looking for part-time work those kinds of questions and then we try to match you and put you in a place that fits what you're looking for <laughs> It, as the CCC is formed and you have uh, a meeting to talk about um, targeting messages, um, there are a number of resources that we can provide um, for you. Some of that data that I talked about on Rome, we can certainly get that information to you, specific for Sheboygan, specific for census tracts, all of that information. And I'll stop there and see if there's any questions of anyone. Yes. Uh, One of the things we're doing, um, some of my counterparts that are covering the community side are reaching out and connecting with Hmong associations and organizations so that um, they too can respond to the census, uh, maybe with an interpreter from one of those organizations. Yes, yes. As we recruit, we definitely, even in terms of our partnership specialists, we do have a wide variety of uh, partnership specialists in Wisconsin, including uh, Hmong staff. Um, and then in terms of um, our recruitment, we do want to hire, again, we want to hire um, people that are in the communities that we need work done in. So hopefully uh, with those efforts, we will have uh, Hmong folks that are in the Hmong community connecting, partnering with them. Um, so that they are not undercounted. Of the census, and I'm wondering in the 2020 census. Not that I want the boxes and boxes of free stuff, but. Is there something, because a question came up, is there some, a lot of these people in the audience today represent, you know, public areas where people are coming and going. So is there 
handouts or brochures or rack cards or something that can be shared that can start to be disseminated in these public locations? Yeah. <laughs> have boxes and boxes of materials and things better known as swag like we had in 2010, but we do have things that we can get out to you. And I can share with you, Chad, a catalog that has a list of things. We have like post-it notes, pens, lapel pens, bag uh, chip clips, a number of things that we can certainly um, work with you to get um, here so that you have that available. That would be good. And then do you have just information? Of, I mean, like a, I don't know, question and answer card or something that, that organizations can make available at their desks and start yes. having dialogue with people that walk in the door to use their services? Yes, we do. We have some, there's a couple of uh, brochures we have. They're eight and a half by 11 size, uh, Census 101. A document, um, two versions of that. One has um, is a different format. One is a more visual format of that. Um, we have um, a couple of messages about the confidentiality of data. All of those things I can get to you. We have them electronically and we also have um, paper copies of that. I don't see it in this form, but I do, but I can get that to you. Because that would be, I guess I'd look to some of you organizational people that have people coming in your door. Would that be helpful in starting to have a, make it available to the public now to just start that dialogue? Yes. So in terms of communication about what our census um, field staff will look like and what, how they're badged, we do send that information out and we'll send that out as we hit those various phases of our work. When we started our address canvassing, we did send that information out to all law enforcement um, entities. So we'll continue to send those messages out. We do also, there is on the 2020 Census website um, a list of the questions that will be on the Census, um, and I'll share that link with Chad um, for that. And then was, I think there was another part. Mm -hmm. Sure. The other thing that I've heard at all of the meetings I've been at, that how, what does that, that invitation that comes in the mail, what will that look like? So once we know what that is, I will also send that out as well. So, so what I think is going to happen from here is that um, being the liaison for the city, I have all, we'll have all your contact information. I've got other people that um, wanted to come, some representatives from the United Way and such. So we will get a, kind of a group of emails together and we'll keep you, as we get information from the census, we'll forward that on to you guys. Um, I'm thinking, given that this is kind of the introduction of the Complete Counts Committee, um, in the next couple of weeks I'll be sending out a doodle poll to try to get the group back together um, and have some further dialogues on hard to count populations and how we might be able to engage in that and have a further discussion as it relates to what was discussed, discussed this evening. So stay tuned for more information as we um, move forward with it. But I, you know, I think it's a lot of us in the room depend on federal funding in our organizations and this is a key part of um, that allocation. So I think there's, you know, benefit in us all kind of working together to 
make this the best it can be. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. I, I can't think of anything that's prohibited. In terms of helping, you know, if, if someone needs help reading the question before they can answer it, I mean, you're certainly welcome to do that. All right, thank you very much. You have my contact information. If you think of more questions, certainly, feel free to give me a call, email, whatever. Thank you. Tasha, thank you very much. We appreciate uh, your appearance tonight. Next, uh, we can go on to the, uh, the reports from the different uh, groups. Uh, let's start with Gateway. Tina? Uh, Mayor, Mayor, maybe you could just wait till the, the ones that are leaving could just. That's fine. Yeah, if anybody would like to stay, that's uh, okay as well too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Good night. I wish I could say it was a clean site, but it's really not. It's got no tanks, but it still has contamination. <laughs>
The mayor's neighbor leadership was at the municipal building, I think. Any any questions for Indiana Corridor? Okay, thank you for that. Next is Near North. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Joe? Hearing none, nobody from Maple Heights, King Park, nobody here from there. Memorial. Thank you for that. Any questions for Memorial? Hearing none. Is there anybody from Volrath North Point? Yep. Okay, thank you for that. Historic grant.
and looking for uh, neighborhood improvements, volunteers to visit and help me get the image and pieces up there. So they're speaking at our next meeting, and there was a lot of interest at our meeting about that, and it was not specifically about that idea, but about something as a group kind of doing a social type of change in the neighborhood type of thing. So um, hopefully that'll create some momentum. Sounds good. Any questions for Historic Grant? There's nobody here from N Park, but Janet's been attending their meetings, so can you give a synopsis of what's been going on? Thank you. Can I have one more thing? Yes. Um, I forgot to mention for our hot dog event, we had the we called the library there, put them a table and did events for the kids and stuff like that. It was one of a really well effect. We had kids playing near Grant that like ended up being like half the group that showed up. Um, all the other people the library there. So if you have an event, they're really engaged in if we should bring her back and maybe do a presentation as it gets closer to the new block party season. Okay. Should I turn it back over to you, Mr. Mayor? Thank you, everyone, for those reports. Um, Next would be, uh, we don't have Penny Weber here. Do we have anything about Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride? Okay. Um, then review of uh, the neighborhood celebration at King Park. Chad? So I just wanted to touch base with
event they have, and should we look at having it next year and try to do it annually for the for budget season? And then the next item is to discuss uh, the update to the city's five-year consolidated plan for the community development block grant program. I think that's yours too, Chad. It is. So we, this is timely because the census um, presentation, and I know, unfortunately, I joke gave me these like, is this, a, is this a subliminal way of getting us signed up for another committee? Yes. And yes, it is. Um, <laughs> because, the, because a lot of what we do on the daily basis Chad's been coming up with for our grant programs, for these cleanup programs. Um, it's all coming from that pile of HUD money that he gets. So very important to us to maintain or improve that number. Chad, could you tell us a little bit about the TIF district that's being extended one year? Yeah, so TID, um, TID 11 is a TIF district that is, uh, encompasses the Washington Square on the south side of town. state statute we can keep it open for one more year and collect the, an extension and collect the, the increment that it generates. So the increment is any new tax base that we generated here for the district based on development. Um, so you can capture that increment and then you can use it for 75% um, of the tax base for affordable housing. Affordable housing is a very loose term in the city of Cachy. It really doesn't give you a definite um, this is what it should be used for. So in this case, the city is capturing around 712000 um, That will be put into a segregated fund. And then the plan is to fund um, an upper floor rehab program to try to encourage um, primarily central business uh, buildings to convert their second floor into apartments. Because right now, a lot of our second floors, particularly on A Street, are underutilized and really just taking up space and they're just the worst of out there. So it would be an idea of getting more people to live above storefronts. Um, some 
of it's going to be targeted towards specific <coughs> neighborhoods, um, primarily the Indiana corridor from Christmas has been the main target from uh, 9th Street to 14th Street, and then um, Pennsylvania and 14th Street, so major corridors.